Welcome to Prep Station. Today we will look at tips and tricks to a successful UTM in literature and English. There are things we must note. First, the UTM in literature and English questions are in two parts. The first aspect you will be tested on the literary text, and then the second aspect you will be te tested on the general principles of literature and English. We look at literary terms, which falls under the general principles of literature in English. And such literary terms, you have things like figures of speech, you have figures of speech, you also have other things you're expected to know when it comes to prose, drama, and poetry, probably their characteristics, and then other items as well. Then scene and unseen poetry. Literary terms. This refers to the general knowledge of literature, figures of speech, the branches of literature, and their types. It also includes excerpts that constitute seen and unseen poetry. Note that seen and unseen poetry could also, you could also have seen and unseen prose, not just poetry. No. Examples of these figures of speech you tested on are simile, metaphor, irony, personification, onomatopoeia, oxymoron, alliteration, hyperbole, on, Asodas, Nedoki, Metonymy, Euphemism, and many more. So knowledge of these figures of speech and more will help candidates when answering questions on literary appreciation. Let's look at some sample questions. Question 1. Pun is a literary device that deals with A. Placing two opposite phrases. B. Placing the words side by side. C. Play on words. D. Arrangement of words. The answer is C. Play on words. We must remember that pun in literary in literature has to do with a play on words. Two. The juxtaposition of two contrasting ideas side by side in poetry is dash A. Euphemism. B. Synecdoche. C. Catharsis. And D, oxymoron. The answer is oxymoron. When you have two opposite words or idea side by side, it's an oxymoron. For example, bittersweet. It's no longer an open secret and things like that. Three, she gave out colonauts and together they ate to appease the angry earth. The underlying phrase in the above sentence is what figure of speech? A, personification. B, simile. C, hyperbole, and D, metaphor. So the answer to that question is personification. The phrase on the line is to appease the angry earth. So you know that the earth cannot be angry in that sense. And personification involves giving human characteristics to things that are not human beings. So in this case, it's personification. Number four. A figure of speech in which the writer means the exact opposite of what he intends to say is A or an A, satire, B, irony, C, paradox, and D, metaphor. The answer is an irony. An irony has to do with saying the opposite of what the speaker intends. Five, is a faithful liar. The above statement is an example of A. Epigram, B. Oxymoron, C. Euphemism, D. Antithesis. The answer to that question is an oxymoron because you have um, the answer to that question is an oxymoron because you have two words, faithful and liar, two contrasting words which have been placed side by side. Number six. Busy old fool, unruly song. Why windows and true curtains call on us? The most vivid figure of speech in the lines above is that I must make something clear. Sometimes you might have one, two or more figures of speech in a particular excerpt. So you're expected at that point in time to look for the one which is vivid or which is obvious because that's what jam will test your knowledge on. So in this case, you've been told to examine the most vivid of the figures of speech in this statement. So the answer is the personification in this case, because the son is described as a busy old fool, 
busy and then old uh, attributes that are assigned to something that is not human. Sample questions on literary text. Let's look at that again. So that had to do with the first section had to do with the figures of speech. Now we are looking at other literary terms you be tested, you could be tested on. A technique by which a previous scene or action can be recalled in a play to shed light on the present action is dash. A climax, B flashback, C interlude, and D catharsis. The answer to that question is flashback. When a writer makes a um, shed light on something that has happened in the past and is brought to the present condition, in that case, it's a flashback. A character whose name is used as the title of the text is A, an antagonist, B, a round character, C, eponymous character, and D, a flat character. The answer is an eponymous character. Eponymous characters are when a character makes use, when a writer makes use of the major character or uses the the title of the book has to do with the major character. That's an eponymous work. For example, you have um, Daniel Defoe's Robinson Crusoe. You have um, um, Tess of Doberville's Mayor of Casterbridge. So in this case, you have you have Tess of Doberville's rather, and then you have more Flanders. So when you read the text, you find out that these are major characters in the work. In that case, you say the book is what eponymous. In poetry, the term license implies a freedom to sell phones, b liberty the poet takes with language, c approval given to poets to compose poems, d honor given to deserving poets. So the answer is liberty the poet takes with language. Poetic license has to do with uh, um, has to do with the fact that a poet could make use of language whichever way he chooses to. So in that case, you say the poet has the poetic license. A band of singers and dancers in drama who act as a link between the play and the audience is A. Chorus B. Clown C. Playwright and D. Cast It's the chorus. They don't necessarily come out to sing. Sometimes they probably do... Um, they probably render like a poem to show what's going to happen in the play. That's what they do. Criticism in a literary activity seeks to A. Find faults in a literary work. B. Analyze and evaluate a literary work. C. Compare and contrast novels. D. Discover the beauty of a literary work. So when you have, when you're um, in literature, when you make use of the word criticism, what actually goes on is the person who is criticizing your work does analyze, would analyze your work and then evaluate. So it's the good and then the bad side. So the answer is B, analyze and evaluate the literary work. So someone who will sit down and then read through your work, analyze it and also evaluate it as well. A situation where an actor addresses the audience without the other actors hearing him is A. Soliloquy B. Chorus C. Aside D. Solo The answer is an aside. An aside is different from a soliloquy. While in the soliloquy, the writer expresses his inner thoughts and aside, other characters could be on stage and then he or she, the character, major character, steps aside or probably turns to the other side and then says his or own opinion in such a way that the audience will watch what's going on. In such a way that the audience watches what's going on and then gives his own opinion about what just took place. The audience gets to hear, but other characters cannot, do not listen to what he or she is saying at that time. That's an aside. In literature, a round character is associated with A, change and growth, B, simplicity and modesty, C, stability and determination, D, running down other characters. The answer is change and growth. In a novel or in a play, or in a novel or in a play, you have two major kinds of characters. You have a round character and a flat character. A flat character is one you can easily predict. You know what he or she is likely to do at that point in time. But a round character is open for 
development changes and at some point learns from his own mistake and is open to growth. That's the wrong character. For example, in the play Fences by August Wilson, which is part of your recommended text, you find out that Troy could be described as a flat character. You could easily predict him. While his wife Rose or his son Cory are round characters. They grow as events in the play unfold. 14. The continuation of meaning without pause from one line to the next is Dutch. A. Enjambment. B. Synergy. C. Arbitration. D. Melodrama. The answer is enjambment. Sometimes you look at a poem, there are no punctuations to end the poem and it just goes like that from the beginning through to the end without a pause. So in that case, it's an enjambment. 15. The plot of a story generally refers to dash. A. Way in which the writer begins the story. B. Intrigue made by the character against the hero. C. Where the character ends the story. D. Way in which the events in the story are organized. The answer to that question is D. Remember, a simple definition of the plot it has to do with the sequence of events in the story. So it also deals with how events in the story are organized. You could find the beginning, the middle, and then the end of that story as well. Now let's look at the seen and unseen excerpts that we have. Number 16. How can I look at Oyo and say I hate long shiny cars? How can I come to the children and despise international schools? And concern comes and the family semi Jesus in him. The feeling conveyed by the speaker above is one of A, anger, B, elimination, C, hope, D, despair. The answer is despair. Remember, you must have an idea of what the mood and tone refers to in literature. So easily you can tell the feeling expressed by the speaker above from this excerpt. Number 17. You see that bears at the rich end? Ha! That motor car is motor car. He belongs to the Minister of Fairness who yesterday was loaded with a doctorate at Mekarere with whiskey. This is written by Tio Luzuka, the motoka. Now what Jam does is when they bring a scene and unseen excerpt, the unseen aspect has to do with the fact that the name of the writer is not stated in the work. But for scene, you have the name of the poet or the author at the end of each work, just as this is written by Tio Luzuka. The excerpt above can be described as dash, A, sad, B, humorous, C, strange, and D, serious. The answer is humorous because from the way it is, if you read it, you'll find out that it's funny and the speaker is trying to create some form of humor with the spelling of words like motoka and then minister of fairness. Number 18. The old man slept in his favorite chair. The wind ran, his, ran its fingers through his hair. He looked like a tree gone dry of sap, and his hands were dry upon his lap. The rhyme scheme of the poem above is dash. Now, when you talk about rhyme, remember, rhyme in English has to do with the middle, the vowel sounds in the words, and then if they correlate with the other sounds as well. So that's what it takes when it comes to rhyme. You look at the vowel sound and then the end of the consonant sound. So let's look at the word chair. You have the S sound in the word chair, that's the vowel sound, which occurs in hair as well. And then sap, you have the A sound. And then lap, you have the A sound. So when you look at the rhyme scheme, you have chair, that's an A, hair, another A, sap, you have B, and lap B. So the right scheme is A A B B because the sound, it's the vowel sound in hair and sap are two different um, sounds. They are two different vowel sounds. So you have A A and then B B. So the answer is B in that sequence. 19. It was not yet closing time, but already most staff were trooping out of their offices. The lift was working now, and he squeezed himself into it. Breathing with difficulty, the body odor emitted by one of the passengers. He sighed with relief, 
when he got to the ground floor and tumbled out of the roof. Kensaro rivers a forest of flowers. In the excerpt above, the subject's experience in the lift is A. Timely, B. Uncomfort comfortable, C. Unpleasant, D. Amusing. So you are asked what the you are asked what the subject experienced while on the lift, and the answer is unpleasant. C. Number twenty. But the towering aunt was tired of sitting in one position. She moved slowly and the houses crumbled. The mountains heaved horribly and the work of a million years was lost. The subject matter of the extract above is A. Storm B. Sea waves C. House movement and D. Earthquake The answer is earthquake because when you read through, you'll find out that there are some pointers. For example, a towering earth. So everything was there on earth and then it was in one position, meaning every, everything on earth at that point, the houses, the trees, they were stable at that point. And then she moved slowly. So when you notice that there's a movement in the earth, on the earth surface at that point, there's more or less like a crack. And gradually the houses what? Crumbled. So that way you could tell that it's the earthquake. So we'll look at recommended poems. Now for your jam, um, syllables, you've been given about the same number of poems as your Y exams, and you have a total of 12 poems. We won't run through all the 12, we'll pick out some and then possible questions. You ask six African poems and six non African poems. So, on this slide, on the remaining slides that will follow, we'll look at some of these poems that are recommended for you and possible questions. The first is Bats by D.H. Lawrence. It says here, in D.H. Lawrence's Bat, the poet persona mistakes the bats for dash, A. Owls, B. Swallows, C. Epistrellos, D. Swallows. Again. That's supposed to be, yes, Swallows. So the answer is Swallows. And then we we'll look at the reference to the following lines. Look up and you see things fly. Between the day and the night, swallows with school of dark tread, sowing the shadows together. So we'll take a break and then we'll come back to continue with the next slides. <laughs> 